Hi, we're back. I'm all right, and uh, now we have Ocean Quigley, somebody who I've worked with for many, many years on many projects, uh, as the creative director on the new SimCity. So welcome, Ocean. Thank you, uh, Will. I have to say I've had uh, more fun playing this SimCity than I've had playing SimCity in over a decade. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, there was a point at which I had played SimCity so much that I was so sick, and you know this, of the whole thing that I just didn't want to touch it for like 10 years. Uh, but now, having played uh, the new version, uh, I really have had a surprising amount of fun. Excellent. So uh, I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, we tried to take the, the thing that was magic about the, the original SimCities and contain it and then bring it forward into something new. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you felt it. Yeah, I mean, there was a sense of uh, familiarity, you know, with kind of what was going on in building a city and people moving in and all that stuff. But yet the presentation of it, uh, you know, as I immersed myself down at the street level, could hear the people, watch them moving around, I really got the sense of what it would be like to live in the neighborhoods. While at the same time, I could pull out and get this amazing kind of visual, intuitive sense of the complex system that was underneath the hood. Cool. Uh, but I thought the balance between the two was very well struck. The way I've been thinking about it is the previous SimCities being sort of isometric maps were, were kind of abstracted representations of places. Mm -hmm. And with the new SimCity, I wanted to make it uh, so that you could experience it as a place. You know, so it was, it was no longer a map, it became a territory. You know, it became something that you could go into and, and see what it would be like to be actually in that, in that place. Yeah, and I felt like that was one of the first things that really grabbed me. I mean, I could kind of zoom back and see the schematic map. Right. But when I came down to the neighborhood level, I felt this kind of visceral, emotional connection. What would it feel like to be in that neighborhood? Cool. You know, how would it be, feel like to be on that street? And that was something that I don't think I ever had with any previous version of SimCity at all. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to do with it was to make you feel more responsibility for the little people that live there, too. Because you do all these horrible things to them, right? right? Yeah. I mean, you, it's you, your you, fault, right? You, 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 Poison them. Their houses burn down. You know, right. they, they're, they're because of your crappy economic decisions. They go homeless. You know, and you I want to back on their services. Exactly. And, et cetera, and, yeah. and I wanted to make it so that when that happened to them, you'd you'd have this guilt. You'd feel this twinge of emotion about your responsibility for the life opportunities for these people that live in this world that you've created. Yeah. So you've made some city a guilt-driven experience. Exactly. Now. <laughs> exactly. I think guilt is an underexploited emotion in video games. So. Yeah, in fact, I think that's actually one of the interesting emotions that you cannot get from something like a book or a film. Yeah, yeah no question. Uh, you know, I've never felt guilty watching a movie or reading a book, but I have felt guilty playing games based upon my decisions. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I found that when I was playing, actually, I was kind of uh, immersing myself not just in kind of the areas and the neighborhoods, but I was imagining myself living the lives of these people. Right. What would it be like to live in that trailer park and work in that grocery store? I went to the U.S. Census data and got all the, the thousand most common last names and the most common first names and made a, a system that mad libs them all together. So mm. the odds are there actually is a Will Wright living somewhere. Well, hopefully he's not living in one of my cities. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, as a new player, you know, it was actually very challenging for me uh, economically. Mm. You know, I, I kind of got the hang of it. And I, at first it felt kind of constrained with a small plot, but then right. I started realizing it was much more about quality than quantity. Yeah. Uh, which um, to me actually felt like a really good design decision because then it focuses you on the depth of the simulation. Exactly. And I can't just kind of like trash an area and then go do something else yeah. over here. Yeah, the intent there was to make it so that... Uh, so that there was so much more resolution to what was going on in any given area that you could um, you know, dive down to it and then get, get essentially lost in what's going on in the simulation and the, the, the detail, the, the movement, the emotion, and then pull back and get the, the kind of the bird's eye, bird's eye view, but that there'd be things for you to go down into mm -hmm. and see. Uh, yeah, opting for depth of simulation as opposed to having something that we inert and large was a real conscious design decision. I'm curious, when you play, because I, I find that when I'm playing, I'm kind of at the map level about half the time, but I really spend about half my time down at the street level just getting a sense, like a, an emotional sense of what it feels like to live there. Uh, do you still find yourself, I mean, having done all these kind of elaborate graphics and spent so much time, uh, you know, achieving that immersive experience, mm -hmm. do you still find yourself kind of going down to that level oh, and no just kind of living in the city? I probably spend the bulk of my time down at that pretty close to ground level just seeing what it's like yeah. in a given spot. Um, I think there's there's really two different large categories of people who play the game. I think there's people who are playing it to understand and beat the simulation in one way or another, uh, and I'd say that the majority of the developers on the team are that kind of player. Right. And then there's people who are playing it because they want to build some environment and sort of feel what it's like to be in there and express some vision or fantasy about what the the sort of world they'd like to build is. And I am very much in that camp. So right. I, I build stuff for 20 minutes and then I spend 45 minutes just kind of like wandering around at street level, looking at things and uh, kind of uh, 
tracking people and seeing what they're doing and then taking screen captures of things. And then I, I'll zoom back out and I'll do another 20 minutes worth of work and then I'll spend another 45 minutes zoomed yeah. in, playing around with things. So it's kind of uh, strategic up here and then experiential down I, there. I think so, yeah, yeah. When you zoom down, that's when you start experiencing the people as people and the, the activity of the city as something that's affecting them, you know, as, as something that's... Yeah, I, I find I spend a lot of time following, like, a police car and just kind of imagining what their daily beat is like, yeah. you know. And as they drive through different neighborhoods, I'm going to get a sense of, oh, that's a kind of a scary neighborhood. That's a nice neighborhood, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I really like that uh, it's almost a narrative that you're building, you know, through a thousand different eyes yes. of what your city feels like to live in. But, yeah, and... Uh, each one of the little Sims, you know, they're trying to live their lives. You see a little Sim walking down the street, you know, it's trying to go shopping, it's trying to get to the hospital, it's looking for work. And the, the city emerges out of the sort of the tapestry of all those threads of Sims walking around and trying to do things. Right. Uh, it's, it's not kind of an abstracted top-down thing. It's very much a, a bottom-up thing that's built out of all those stories. And I think that's part of where the guilt comes from is that I, I kind of feel that they're very earnest and they're really trying their best to get a job, right. and to do this, and to do well. But, uh, you know, they get thwarted by decisions you've made up here at the yeah, strategic yeah, level. Absolutely. You, know, you absolutely. didn't build a good street or there's no school for them to get an education. And that's when, you know, you start feeling like you're the one holding back their lives. And I think that fundamental decision to redo the simulation as a bunch of agents and objects enables sort of that close reading of the simulation and uh, the larger emergence of the whole sort of state of the city out of, uh, out of you know, those thousands or millions of individual stories. Yeah, Stone and I discussed that a bit. I mean, it does feel like a very fundamental shift away from kind of a spreadsheet experience yeah. to now kind of a terrarium with, you know, thousands of little creatures living yeah, their lives absolutely. inside of this box. And it did feel like that in playing the game. I, I did feel like there were thousands of little agents living their lives, yeah. driving cars, waiting at bus stops, going to school, you know, all those things. And uh, that authenticity, I think, gave me a totally different emotional connection to the experience, you know, that I was having right. as a mayor. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's pretty satisfying to see the consequences of your actions on the actual lives of these little folks that live down there. You know, like you, uh, you bulldoze a factory and the little people that used to work there are now unemployed. Right. And you see them get kind of desperate as they go around looking for additional jobs, looking for some way to get money to pay the rent. Right. And then eventually, you know, their their cries for help get, <laughs> get feebler and feebler and feebler. And then poof, the house goes abandoned. You see the little the little family leave and be homeless in the park. Yeah. You know, and you're like, I, I did that. <laughs> you know, like I as a player made those decisions that, that uh, carried out. I, I kind of, I decided early on in the game that if, the little Sims couldn't be made to suffer, you wouldn't care about them. You mm -hmm. know, if they were invulnerable, if they didn't need anything from you. If they just poofed and disappeared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then then you, you wouldn't have any reason to care about them or care about their well-being. But by making them uh, fragile, by making them people that need your help to, to live their lives, uh, you feel the sense of responsibility and uh, and compassion for them, I think. And that's one of the things that uh, that gives the game emotional heft. Yeah, and I think that's kind of remarkable. You think of strategy games as being things that are very abstract. You know, I don't really care if I lose a pawn in chess. Right. Um, but to take that kind of strategic uh, depth and gameplay and turn it into kind of a deeper emotional experience, um, I think that, you know, so much of the technology that you put into this, you know, the visuals, the sound, et cetera, uh, are toward that end. Right. Um, and it's not just a matter of adding lots of bells and whistles or, you know, just making the graphics look prettier, but it really is toward the end of getting the player emotionally connected right to this complex thing that they're building. And I think that was actually part of your genius with taking real world objects like cities and people as your subjects. They, they come loaded with all this emotional meaning. Uh, and so all you need to do is tap into it. You know, we, we, we all have experiences of what it's like to be in trouble or what it's like to look for something and not find it or right. what it's like to get a job when you need a job. And so- Or to be in a scary neighborhood. Exactly. Or to be in a nice park, yeah. And, and so, so it's, so, you're not trying to convince somebody what it's like to be a space marine, for example. You're trying to take these common, mundane human experiences that everybody has and uh, and build a system that taps into those emotional states. Right. It's reflecting your own experiences back to you. Yeah. Uh, but now you have a totally different level of kind of responsibility and control over it. So all in all, I mean, I spent a lot of time, you know, kind of playing with the, the basic stuff, the core city, building the roads, building it up. And then I just started getting into the specialties, you know, kind right. of exploring, you know, an ore town or a tourist town. And, you know, it's just trying to really get a glimpse of the diversity of cities. You know, right. not every city is going to be this monolithic, you know, one size fits all thing. But right. In fact, you get these totally different flavors of cities. And uh, that's something I'm just kind of getting into. And also the idea of the region gameplay and trading with neighbors. Right. And, 
the kind of multiplayer thing. But um, you know, I've been just remarkably impressed, not just with this as a game, but uh, with my history of this and how much time I'd spent thinking about it. To be kind of surprised and delighted as right. much as I had by such a new interpretation of it. Right. It must so. be like it must be like seeing your kid go off to college and then come back years later. You know, like yeah, oh, yeah. that's that's what became of you. Yeah, but uh, also, you know, very proud in some sense, but also extremely happy and surprised that, oh, my God, I never even thought you would turn into that. Right. You know, your, uh, your success succeeds my expectations. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I can't thank you enough for doing such a great job with this. You know, uh, I'm really looking forward to your next project. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, when are we going to hear more about that? Uh, <laughs> I think for now, SimCity for a little while. Still. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, at any rate, thank you very much, Ocean, for my, being here today. My pleasure, Will. Thanks. And, uh, I'm really one of your biggest fans now. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So that was Ocean Quigley, the creative director on the new SimCity, which will be out the first week in March.